this white paper is first of all about making transport industry in Europe even more competitive, but making it more competitive also means making it more resource efficient. You see a, a very strongly growing demand still in mobility, and it, that's not going to change in the next year, so it's a, it's a, a steep uphill battle. Um, I think the, 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 what the Commission says in, in the White Paper is quite ambitious. It's a very long-term uh, goal, which I think is right. Um, and I think the main challenge is, is technological. We must have uh, good uh, regulations on the efficiency of vehicles and the carbon impact of fuels. And unfortunately, uh, this White Paper uh, that the Commission has today proposed doesn't hint towards any of those suggestions. I think we have to be realistic. We have to change the transport sector until the year 2050, which means that we have to show a pathway where we move away from oil until 2050, where we have a 60% reduction in terms of CO2 emission in the year 2050. But this will be a long struggle. It will mean making the internal market more efficient, it will mean building new infrastructure, it will mean developing in innovation in the sector and these are the main messages in the white paper. They want cost-effective uh, measures uh, to help uh, the, the CO2 in transport to reduce and they want also to preserve the competitiveness of the industry which I think is very important. What is dangerous is actually unilateral move by the European Commission which would put its industry, cars, trucks and technology at stake versus competitors worldwide. It will have to be a combination of improving efficiency enormously. So so that's technological um, challenges we have. Uh, we have to change habits, which is one of the most difficult things to do. Uh, we will have to um, improve the internal market and make the access to, to, to the whole network much more easy, which for instance for rail transport is a huge problem. It's a rather empty shell, unfortunately. Um, one thing that also suggests that this Commission is not going to do much is that um, until the period of 2030, this book actually says we are going to cut emissions by 1% a year of transport, which is nowhere near enough, and then between 2030 and 2050, suddenly, magically, we're going to reduce these emissions by 5% a year, five times as fast, which clearly suggests that the Commission is waiting for some kind of magic silver a bullet that will solve the problem for them and we all know that these silver bullets won't come if there's not a lot of political pressure. We have uh, a list of 40 initiatives in the white paper. These 40 initiatives will be implemented in the next 10 years. The white paper has been done together with our climate colleagues and also our energy colleagues and we're working at an approach which is cost efficient for the European Union so we're putting this very straight into a job and growth agenda as well and we think that we can be ambitious but at the same time also realistic in terms of achieving our transport targets. For the next 20 years the combustion engine plays a role, hybrids will play a role in cities, both electric hybrids and other hybrid concepts. For example, we can store braking energy not only in a battery but also in a pressure tank. So there are many other things than electrification that companies are working on. We keep doing the things we do best, we're engineers, uh, you have to remember that oil is the highest density fuel, so this is very difficult to replace in transport, that's the highest density for heavy duty, for aviation, etc. On the other side, ExxonMobil is working on many other things like carbon capture and sequestration, we have an algae uh, program uh, which uh, uh, has a purpose as to produce biofuel in five to ten years from now. Uh, we have uh, hydrogen uh, production, we are working on a series of platforms which, if they become uh, competitive, will gradually find their way to the market.